so um so hello again everyone and we gone we are going to get back into our lectures um we have covered a few things about just basic introduction on profits already so i'm not going to go back there but i don't know exactly where the link our conversation cut so because of that i'm going to start um just a little bit back and um, move move on so before we go on i'm going to pray and then we're gonna go ahead and get right into it so let's pray father god we want to thank you for your love and your mercy thank you for your goodness thank you for the book of Osea. thank you jesus that um through this book you teach us you show us your heart in a very raw way in a very open way and um, even if the circumstances of our how we study the word are not always convenient lord um, as long as we can study that is the most important thing and i'm thankful for that we are thankful for all the, all the technology that we have in our dispositions in our hands that we can use lord and holy spirit i ask you even now for every student to encourage for you to encourage them for you to um give them strength in this in this season of their lives and also teach them through the 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 book of Osea that you will teach them Lord that you will um, equip them that show them your heart to reveal them something about your heart let it let this book not just pass to be another book but let let it leave an imprint in their heart and lives in Jesus name Amen Amen so as I said um, we are going to uh, start. Um, our prophetic books we've having few things in the background so please have your timelines you need your timeline these timelines was my, was for my first year this one can you imagine i've been using it since then every time i go through kings and prophet and i just store it now hmm. but anyway not for that so i don't know exactly where i stopped but i'm gonna just quickly go through So I talk about Judah, the kings of Judah that are, that are mentioned in the book of Hosea. So in the time of Hosea pro prophesied, Judah was not too bad. Let's put it that way. Because they had good kings. But the kings um, are not a reflection of what's going on in the life of the people. But the kings play a very powerful significant role in how the nations go to how the or how the nation is led so judah good king with um Uz uzziah jotam also a good king Ahaz. okay if my if my my head cuts a little bit this part please uh, don't mind don't mind me Ahaz, oh, Ahaz was the bad king very bad king in the life of judah really bad and uh, Ezekiah one of the best king after David because he was true to the Lord and uh, you have seen all of them now um, Israel Jeroboam Jeroboam the second was a bad king even if he was a military leader he was still doing the wrong things but God had mercy on Israel when Jeroboam was the king because of that also Zechariah also so in the time of Jeroboam's uh, when uh, Jeroboam reigned Osea our prophet that we're learning now was prophesying so there is a correlation of God's mercy to Jeroboam in the time where Osea prophesied. So you can see the role of a prophet in a nation, but I'm not giving that only to Osea, but God had mercy on Jeroboam. And after Jeroboam, it all went downhill from there. As I said, so Osea prophesied in the reign of Jeroboam, which was 41 years. 
And we do not, I don't think he prophesied after Jeroboam. But after Jeroboam, it's good for us just to know that Zechariah was the king, six months. Shalom, one month. Menahem, ten years. Pekiah, two years. Pekah, twenty years. And then Oshia, nine years. And it's the end of Samaria, the northern kingdom. So these are the events that led to the exile of Israel. Okay, so we have gone through this. Um, okay, so now I'm quickly going to go to... Now, let's get into Osea. So that was just the over glance of the things where I stopped. And now we are going to get into the book of Osea. So this book is a very interesting prophetic book because if you are a say and you are a prophet, you cannot marry the woman or the man of your dreams. <laughs> Never mind, they want to marry you or whatever it is. There is a specific call in on Osea's life. There are debates um, among scholars about if... Um, this has really happened, and this was a real story. But uh, And they say that this might be a, just a metaphorical story that Osea wrote, and this and that. Um, there is no conclusive, um, conclusive um, uh, evidence and proof for that, because most of the prophets who had uh, enactment prophecies uh, are... Ev did the actions like you will see in the in the life of uh, Ezekiel for instance a lot of prophetic weird action he had to do and it was not metaphorical it was not um, a story that he wrote it really happened and in the same way we will see uh, the first of the reason the name of the people like Gomer the daughter of Diblaim like all of these are real names um even if we don't really see a lot of them in the you know where, where else they're not really mentioned but it shows that it, this was not something that was just uh, a little story. Otherwise, it would have been just people without any father's name. That makes sense. Secondly, the names of the children, okay? And the message, the message and the action that uh, Osea had to do. Because God was speaking to Osea and he had to do certain things. So the first question in introduction in the book that I want to ask you as you, you, you as a student. Imagine you are married, okay? Or, and the question is how far will you go for love? That is the question. How far will you go for love? How far will you go to keep the marriage? Second question is, ah, uh, so that's that's like the heart of Osea. How far will you go for love? Like that's God's heart. How far did God go for His love for Israel? Okay. A few things about Osea, just as a as a book. The book of Osea is the first book of a collection of 12 small prophetic writings, okay? So there are 12 small prophetic books and Osea is one of them. So you will do all those prophetic books in the future, but it's part of the small, uh, small minor prophets, let's put it that way. And uh, one of the contemporary of Osea is Amos. Um, the book of Osea is addressed to the northern kingdom. So when you think about Osea, you don't think southern kingdom, even if the southern kingdom are mentioned, because there is a comparison between the two. And it's very clear that it was written when, uh, when the northern kingdom was still uh, standing and when the southern kingdom was also still standing. So the writings of this book was probably in the same time that the... Um, the event happened, the, the, the action happened, or a little bit after that, because in verse 10, um, it, it says, Then I went 
and then I did this. So it's something that Osei I did in the past, but it's clear that it was in his lifetime because he, he speaks in the first person when God speaks to him. The second part, that's chapter 3, verse 1, and that's also chapter 1. First of all, in the, in the chapter 1, it, it, Osea is spoken in the third person. But then, in the first, chapter 3, is is spoken in the first person. But you know, the, the Hebrew people, they sometimes speak about themselves in the third person. But here it's very clear that uh, from chapter 3 that he is the speaker. It's between it, a conversation happens between him and God, and he, 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 it, it's very clear the hero he is part of the one who say who wrote this book. He wrote the book. So now let's get into the text. In your opinion, what is the best love story ever? Okay, I will give you two seconds to think about it. In all the stories of love stories, Hollywood movies, or life experience parents maybe friends i don't know who who whose story is the best love story think about it okay so you have an answer in your mind now more or less very good next one is but this is the turn of the story imagine if you are in a marriage and you are married some of you are married some of you are not married okay what would you do if your spouse is an adulterer. Okay, this is adulterer, not adulterer. Ad ad adulterer. Okay, let me correct this thing. What would you do if your spouse was... Guys, my English is poor, poor, poor. Okay. What would you do if your spouse was an adulterer? That is the question. What would you do if your spouse is an adulterer? Now, I would love to have interaction. Okay. But because there is no interaction, I will think about the things that you might say. What would you say? Okay, Johan is here is listening to me. I'm just going to use him as a student here. What would you do if your spouse me and me? <laughs> this doesn't put me in a great, best position. What would you do if your spouse is an adult was an adulterer? You'd be very mad. Okay, what else? Very sad. Very sad okay. Yeah. Okay. So if your spouse is, you'd be very mad. You'd be very sad. You'd be heartbroken. Okay, understand this. You'll be heartbroken. Emotionally, it's going to take the hugest toll of your life. You're going to be so disappointed in life. Some people might want to commit suicide. I've I heard story of, of those things. Or you would want to divorce your spouse if they are an adulterer, either he or she. Okay, I want to include everyone here. You would say, I'm done with this. Goodbye forever. Bye-bye. I'll find another one who is not an adulterer, right? That would be like the reaction. Okay, so that is going to define your understanding of marriage. Because this book is challenging our understanding of marriage in many ways. And the intensity, especially not from the human perspective, but from God's perspective of how far will God go for the sake of love, okay? Because this is the answer that we are going, that we're going to try to answer in this book. What would you do if your spouse was an adulterer? And this is the question for Israel. What would God do if Israel was an adulterer? The, the answers to those questions are exactly the same. Let's continue. So this is Osea's household, chapter one. Okay, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna just give you a few, few pictures here, but we are gonna get a little bit into them now, now, just now, now, now. I don't know how to say that, but we're gonna, we're gonna get into them. 
Okay, so, um, oh, so many notes in front of me, my dear everyone here. So let me get my next note. Huh. Okay, so Osea's household. What's going on with Osea's household? First of all, he married Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she is a prostitute, or she is a woman of whoredom, of promiscuity. Okay, that's what she is, and um, you can send that in verse one. Secondly. I'm just giving you the big picture of the household right now. Secondly, she got children of whoredom, meaning that she got children. She's in the marriage, but she's also having other men alongside with the marriage. And this is the call that God has, has called to Osea. This is not something Osea has planned like, okay, I'm so bored with my life. I'm going to get a, a prostitute, a woman um of uh, small uh, moral morality woman of no morality as a wife because that's just what i want when you think about marriage those are the things that you would never choose to do but here god comes and he sees the situation in israel and here is mr osia and he calls osia as a prophet and this is what god asked him to do when the lord first spoke through osia the Lord said to Osea. So this is the first thing that God said to Osea. Verse 2. Go take for yourself self a, war, a wife of whoredom. So God told Osea. Go take yourself a prostitute as a wife. Okay. And there is a reason. It explains clearly. For the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So now... This is what you need to see. You see the wife and you're going to see the children. There's going to be a big enactment. His life, his entire life is an enactment prophecy of God's, um, God's heart, God's relationship with Israel. Osea, and we're going to go there. But anyway, let's get to the children. So a wife of boredom, meaning a prostitute, she will never be faithful to you. She will go with other men. And um, you, you won't do anything about it. Secondly, and you cannot divorce her. Oh, yes, that's another thing. You're not allowed to get rid of her. Put yourself in the shoes of Osea now. Secondly, child number one, Jezreel. God, it means God will scatter. So she has three children. Jezreel, meaning God will scatter. Secondly, lo ruama, it means no mercy, because God will have no mercy. And these are the, the, the messages. I'm just giving the family situation here, but we're not going to go deep into the text yet. And the next one is uh, child number three, lo ami, not my people. Okay? Not my people. So first of all, we have seen Jezreel, God will scatter. Secondly, Loruama, no mercy. And thirdly, Loami, not my people. And you are married to a prostitute and you have those children and you cannot know for sure if they are your biological children. You cannot know. But they are children of wardom. So some of them might be your some of we you don't know, but it's be, be, if if they had DNA test test you know by then then they, they could but they couldn't know he could not know maybe the resemblance I don't know but they are definitely might be even not his children at all. Now this is Osea's household. It's one big dysfunctional heartbreaking family. Okay, it's not going well it's really bad it's really really bad and that is Osea's life and calling so now let's quickly look at the correlation of Osea's life and life message and suffering and pain whatever you call it and what is what 
is God saying about it? Because God is saying something through his life to him as a prophet, but also for the whole nation to see what is going on. And in those days, prophets, if you are a prophet and you have pr prediction and it happened, people have certain respect for you. But now, imagine being in the shoes of Osea. Imagine that. You are a, respect, a prophet, you know, you are in the church or whatever, and you are married to some sort of woman that everybody knows that she is very loose in her behavior. No one is fooled, okay? I think household as a he. Um... And uh, imagine, imagine, imagine being that, 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 that space. So can you imagine Osea's shame in the community? Everywhere he goes or whatever, they know, oh, that's a prophet. Oh, that's a guy married to prostitute. Oh, did you know that the second child is not his son? It's the son of that other man, okay? Those are the social implications of this kind of marriage. Now, so this is the story. Oh, Gomer wanted other men. She was after other men all the time. Yet she's married to, to him. Does he have the right to stone her and uh, send her a, a letter of divorce? He could. But that was not God's calling for his life. His, his life was much more bigger and he, has, he had to carry this pain. Now, Let's continue. There is an identification that is going on between Osea's life and God's relationship with Israel. This is the point of the story here. Osea represents Osea and Gomer. So Osea is one thing, Gomer is one thing. Osea represents God in the story. Okay, Osea represents God. So when you see the marriage of Osea and Gomer, Osea represents God, and Gomer represents Israel. And when we say Israel, we, we are specif specifically talking about Israel as the northern kingdom. Okay, when you think about Israel in the prophet, you don't think about one nation anymore. You think about a split nation with Israel in the north and Judah in the south. Okay? There is a covenant. Okay, you will find this a little bit... Uh, no, 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 you will not. 2 Samuel 7, very important part of, 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 um, of the story. 2 Samuel 7 is the place where God makes a covenant with Israel. David, that he will keep his land forever, and for him there's going to be a king forever, okay? So God has kept his promise to Judah, shoof, all the way through the, their own fate, you know, their own end. They, the, but Israel didn't have that promise because of the split. And now, what is God saying toward Israel? What is actually Israel doing in this covenant that they have with the Lord. Secondly, God is the husband. Osea represents the husband to Gomer. God is the husband to Israel. Secondly, Osea is a father to the children. And uh, Osea is a prophet and he is faithful. That is character. That is the character that Osea has to portray. Let me notice you that if you are married to a promiscuous person that is cheating on you day in and day out, you cannot divorce because God said so, because of your calling. We're talking Old Testament now. I'm not telling you you must, you must marry a prostitute. None of you, I, be, I think, is called to marry a prostitute. Please choose your spouse wisely when that time comes for those who are not yet married. But this is a very specific time in a specific era okay imagine you have to you are marrying this woman she's going everywhere and here you go to the market there is a beautiful single woman god fearing caring you know very rare god fearing woman in israel in those days 
what happens? Good family. Not one of those who have uh, um, defiled themselves with idolatry. And she likes you. And you are married to a prostitute. What is the first thing that's going to go to your brain in that situation, for example? You want? She would be a bit a better match for me. I'm a prophet of God after all. But no, you have to be faithful to an unfaithful spouse. You cannot look around left, right and center, check your, check your Facebook DM messenger and check who is chatting to me today that I know. You cannot do that. You need to stay focused on the calling that God has of honor left. Or you're going to have heartbreak every day, every day. Or maybe two nights in a row she's not at home. She's with her lovers. And she comes back and she doesn't care even about you. She doesn't. She doesn't give you any attention. She doesn't even explain herself. And then she stays a little while. And then she goes again. And then she gets pregnant. And all of those things, you need to stay faithful. That's the call of Hosea. And that's how God is. Now, how is Gomer, which is the picture of Israel? She is the wife of Hosea. She is the mother of the children. She is a prophet and she is a prostitute. He is faithful and she is unfaithful. So you can see the direct contrast here. Contrast. Very strong contrast between Osea and Gomer. But the parallel between Osea and God and Gomer and Israel. So this is the blueprint that you need to keep in your mind when it comes to understanding this book. First of all, just by doing this, God is not seeing Israel as just a group of people that need to follow him. In Israel, he sees a marriage covenant. When God sees his people, his relationship with them is as a relationship with a husband and a wife. It's a marriage covenant. There is real love. There is real pain. There is, there is emotion. But also, there is a promise of faithfulness that happens no matter what. So that's God's character. That's God's nature. And now, when you see this entire book, you must see this in the light of God and Israel. It's not just like, oh, some covenant in Mount Sinai that we need to keep, oh my word. No, for God, this is a marriage. For him, he is married to Israel. That's how much he loves Israel. Do you think it's easy for him to just send them to exile and be destroyed as a nation? Do you think it is easy for him now that the heart of God is exposed like this? I don't think so. You know, when we see the evil of those kings and everything that they did, like, oh my word, think about Manasseh and all those people. Think about all those kings and you say, you deserve it. Let them destroy you. Let the enemy destroy you. Deserve it. Well, 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 wait, 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 wait. That that people that you say you deserve it, it is a person that God dearly loves and he's very jealous about. It's his spouse. That nation is, is like that. And they have a covenant. It's not like they don't have a covenant. They have a covenant toward one another. The nation and God, they had the covenant. And this is, the, in a nutshell, the, the flow of the book. Now, what to observe? I'm sure John or other coaches have gone through you through this. So I'm just going to go through general information. And I, but I believe you already seen this, these things. First of all, repeated word. Obviously, repeated word. Words such as or dumb and um, I will do this, I will do this, I will do this. Notice those things. Um, repeated word about lovers and um, repeated word um, regarding um, offerings and sacrifices. Repeated word. All of those kind of repeated words. It's very important to, to see like uh, gods, house of gods and bells and all of those things. Wardom, 
that's in the same uh, area. Also, return, return to the Lord. There are specific repeated things that you will see in this book. Um, that you will see. But you don't have to go into de depth of repeated, but you just need to observe them. The second thing is you can also observe the figures of speech that you will see in the book. Okay, Let's try to look for the figures of speech. Uh, connectives, okay. The therefore, especially therefore, this will happen, therefore I'll do this. So I'll do this. And now Israel's sin. So now regarding Israel's sin, now the, those are like the general, the things you need to observe as well. Did I put that in? Yeah. Israel's sins, God punishment and judgment, those are part of the prophetic oracles. Okay. So when you see a, a prophetic oracle, for example, a lawsuit oracle or a woe oracle or um, a promise oracle, you will find those things in, in, the, in the book. For example, a lawsuit, like there is an indictment, like you have done this, there's a charge. Most of those things are Israel's sin. This is what God, this is what you have done. Okay. You have done this. You have done this. Color those things in the same color. Look at the content of the sin and the people who has done the sin. What did they do? So, so for example, there is an accusation. You, this is your sin. You have committed this. So those are part of like a lawsuit oracle. And then there will be the evidence like, oh, um, the, 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 the list of the sin, okay? It can be combined sometimes. And here comes the verdict or the punishment. Like, because you have done this sin, this is what I will do to you. This is what will happen to you. And remember when this happened, God says this to his wife. It's like Gomer says this to her, to, 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 to Gomer, that he loves so much. He loves her so much, even if she is a, an adulterer, unfaithful woman. Just kicking her out is not going to be the solution. What is going to be the solution for us to get together? Because the heart of God is to get together as one with Israel again. The heart of Osea is to be one and in peace and faithfulness with her, his wife again. That's, that, that's the heart. Maybe... I don't know how much he had that art, but that's God's heart. That's what he wanted. Yet, he cannot just be blinded toward the evil thing she does. He cannot. Because it's flagrant. It's in front of him every day. And um, you see, th then that's the judgment and the punishment. And you also will see the woe oracle. Woe to you, this and that. So when you say woe to you, check who is he wooing. And you will see, is it going to be the people? Is it going to be the, the kings? going to be the priests? I don't know, but you will see. And then you also need to check, okay? I didn't write it in there, my apology, but it should be in there in the list. Promise oracle. Okay, um, I had two studies, and I think I didn't add this. But there is, I will write here, promise, oracle. Before the promise, oracle, there is a call for repentance. Okay. So there is a call for repentance. Look, when is um, Osea calling for a repentance? When there is those things. Sometimes the call for re repentance goes before the punishment. Sometimes it's after. It depends. But somewhere there's Osea say, but Israel, return, return to me, return. That's a call of repentance. And finally, promise oracle. And then God in his great mercy in that day, says the Lord, I will do this. So God's judgment, the promise oracle, they are similar. They are similar, but the one is just a negative um, word and the one is a positive word. Promise oracle, it's like, I will do this. I will change you and 
all of those things. So those are things you need to observe. And I encourage you to be emotionally engaged in this. Don't distant yourself because it's heartbreaking. Emotionally put yourself engaged in this pain that, that um, the Lord is feeling toward these people. Try to put yourself in the shoes of those people that you may um, understand the book a little bit better. Now let's go to the structure of the book, okay? So if you observe those things, you are in a good direction. John might have given you even more things to look up. Please go for it. Now, structure. The book is divided in two main divisions. Okay, this is what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the main division e divisions in the book. Okay. So, um, Osea, Osea's marriage, right? Chapter, from chapter 1, verse 1 to uh, 1, uh, 1 to 5, the first free chapter is one division and the second one is another one. So it's in two different. So the first part is Osea's marriage <coughs> with unfaithful Gomer. The first part is focused on this relationship, this marriage, this marriage covenant that Osea have to take to, his, to, a, to Gomer. And how, how does that play out? And the second part is God's marriage with unfaithful Israel. And the first part is a little glimpse of the second part of the book. So in the first part, it's mainly between Osea and Gomer. In the second part, it's between God and Israel. And you will see few parallel between those two things as you do the right identification in the way you look into the book. Look into the book. And uh, that, this is the main structure. In the next uh, things, I will have few little divisions, like little segments. But you don't have to use them as your segments or sections or anything like that. These are my way and I used few um, research to come up with the, the, even the titles. Please do not use my titles. Thank you. And um, so this is the main structure of the book. And um, we're going to go into the keywords or something like that a little bit later. Okay, when we get into the, into the book. Okay, so this is, in short, the family of Osea. Okay, his family was children that, not his, a woman that is promiscuous and he had to raise those, you know, whatever and it was very tragic and very difficult but it is also God's relationship with Israel so now without further ado we're gonna start to get into the text okay so let me escape this and save this one and um Slide show from the start. So let us get into the text. Okay. So I just need to drink water because I speak a lot. Okay. So chapter 1, so this is my own little title, Israel's rejector, Rejection Symbolized by Osea's Marriage, meaning the way Israel rejected God 
is the symbol of Osea's marriage. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to not make the lectures too long because you also need time to do your own studies. So, um, yes. Hosea, chapter 1, verse 1. The word of the Lord that came to Hosea, the son of Barry, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Ezekiah, king of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, son of Joash, king of Israel. You, we see the parallel. You've uh, noted your timeline for the book of Kings. And um, I don't know if you got little um, summary like these ones, prophets like this. But uh, you might have received this. Always have this next to you when you do any prophetic book so that you get refreshed all the time of the things that you need to have in mind. So I'm not going to go in the details of those things. But to, to make a summary is that Jeroboam was a bad king. The southern kingdom was a little bit better except for in the time of Ahaz. And you can see that in the book of Kings which already given earlier on. Now let's read. I'm going to read. So chapter 1 verse 2. So now the Lord is speaking to Hosea. When the Lord first spoke through Hosea, the Lord said to Hosea, Go take for yourself a wife of Ordom, and have children of Ordom, for the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. What is the repeated word? Whoredom. It means um, Israel has been um, committing whoredom. What is whoredom in the view of Israel? If you are Osea and your wife is going to another man, it means that for, you know, love and relationship and intimacy and all of that, it means that Israel is doing the same toward the Lord and they forsake the Lord and they turn to other gods. They turn to other people. They turn, they give themselves fully to other things that are not of the Lord. Okay, and it's going to be reflected in their lifestyle. So when that is the word that came to uh, Osea, what, that, what, what does Osea, Osea do as a good, as an obedient prophet? What does Osea do? He went and he took Gomer, the, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and bore him a son. So it say bore him a son, but we cannot be for sure that that son is his biological son. We cannot be for sure. Because God already said that there's going to be children of whoredom in the beginning. Right? So, and then when, when she borrows some, this is what to say. Name the son Jezreel. Okay? What? Jezreel. Ay, 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 ay. That doesn't sound kosher. Jezreel. Why does he have to call the son Jezreel? Okay, let me quickly check something here in my other notes. Yes. Jezreel. What does Jezreel mean? You say God will scatter. And why? Jezreel, for it is just a little while I will punish the house of Jehu. For the blood of Jezreel, and I will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. This is a glimpse of what is God busy doing. First of all, imagine having those weird names. Imagine you are a child, and what's your name? My name is uh, No Mercy. What's your? My name is not my people, okay? So as a child, and this is your name, it's going to be so weird in school. You might be bullied for your name. And, um, and oh, why? Because God is going to punish the house of Jehu. So the Jewid, very interesting part of the story. So Jehu, what does Jehu do? Jehu... Uh, put an, an end to the um, 
இந்த 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 நோர்தன் கிங்டம் இ புட் அண்ட் அண்ட் டு த ரெயின் ஆஃப் சேசபேல் தட்ஸ் வாட் ஹேப்பன் ஸோ இட்ஸ் இன் த புக் ஆஃப் கிங்ஸ் வேர் ஆர் மை நோட்ஸ் வேர்ஸ் மை நோட்ஸ் yep my notes is here my apologies people yes kings kings chapter 9 verse 5 9 and 10 okay so king two kings two kings uh chapter 9 verse uh 17 to 37 and 10 uh verse uh 7 and 8 and then there's a bloodshed that happened chapter 10 verse 17 to 27 so what happened first of all is um jehu was that man that used by god to destroy jezebel right you remember ahab and jezebel and everything they did they worship baals and then they uh, also oh they st- they stole the vineyard of Naboth and they did all kinds they wanted she was against Elijah the whole time wanted to kill Elijah she was bad and she was just she yeah she's a Phoenician okay and now Jehu was called by God to do something to put an end to the line but what Jehu has done was over and beyond what he was called for because i'm going to quickly read first king second king chapter 10 from verse 17 ah uh, when he came to samaria he struck down all who remained to ahab in samaria and he wiped them out according to the word of the lord so chapter and if we, you continue up up till there he destroy the prophets of baals okay so so he killed the prophets of baals he killed he make a bloodshed and then he reigns so what happened is that he even he, he was called to do something but he took it way further he, he went the extra mile for the bloodshed so there was a huge bloodshed and that was something that um that uh, that he he has done and um unfortunately um that was not God's heart for the people there there are many other interpretation as well about about Jezreel but that was one of the reason why um even if you're called by God to do something but you destroyed and commit merciless bloodshed you will still have to be accountable for your action so that's the first child second child and he conceived again and bore a daughter and the lord said to him call her no mercy so you have seen now the three children the first one is a son the second one is a daughter so now her name is no mercy why because god will not have any mercy on israel this is what the lord this is what god says lo ruama um it's a very interesting word because um it also means compassion and uh it's um it's very similar to the the word womb in hebrew hakam so hehem hakam it's very similar there is kind of a play on word in here and later all said you say they i will make them no have children because of this and um 
and this is what uh, and it also means forgiveness you know um, and here uh, it's a color name no mercy for I will have I will no more have mercy on the house of Israel, Israel to forgive them all. So God is saying, my mercy has stopped. What is the implication of this? It means that all along when they did the evil deed with all those kings, why, didn't they, why were they not destroyed? Why were they just okay? Why did they still continue? It was because of God's mercy. It was God had mercy on them. They have done this for centuries. This is not something that happened yesterday. This is something that happened for centuries, hundreds of years. Okay? And God had say, I've had enough. I don't have mercy. And then he said, but I will have mercy on the house of Judah. I will save them by the, uh, by the Lord their God." I will not save them by the bow and the sword or by the horse, by the war, by horsemen or by horse. But, but he will save them. So there is a contrast between who? The south and the north. So even if the south is also not doing very well, the north is like, oh, there, you're not going to have mercy. Okay? It's going to be difficult. So when she wins no mercy, she conceived the born son. So just after, no mercy was still very small. And then the third born, the little boy, last one came. And then it's possible that even in winning no mercy, she might have, um, have, um, have gone to other men again. We don't know exactly what happened in the middle. But then when she was pregnant, the Lord, and when conceived, the Lord told me, told Osea, to give those terrible names to these children because it's not about the children. It's about God and Israel. And then he said, Lord, say, call his name, not my people, for you are not my people and I am not your God. Okay. Are they really not God's people? They are God's people, but the way they live is completely in the opposite of what God's people does. Because when you look at the, the things they did, that is not what God's people do. That is not how God's people should live like. And, um, and he, God has almost like removed himself from them. And uh, after this, the relationship, not my people, it's like, you know, mine. And after this, something changed in the relationship of Osea and Gomer. Because there might be a time where actually they split. Or maybe she left and the children stayed. Or, but there is something, there is a split, a, a, um, a chasm that happened between... Gomer and uh, Osea at this, at this time. So those are the three messages. Jezreel, there's going to be a payment. Secondly, I will not have mercy for all the things, but I will have mercy on Judah. And last thing, you are not my people. So that can be very heartbreaking. Imagine having to name your children like that. It, it's not easy. Now, let's continue the, the next part of Osea. Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall, shall be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And in the place where it was said to them, you are not my people, it shall be said children of the living God. And here, just after the word of judgment, there is already a word of promise already given about that, yes, you have been called not my people, but you, all, you are going to be called my children again. And in this part, I'll read chapter, uh, verse 1. And the children of Judah and the children of Israel shall be gathered together, and they shall appoint for themselves one head, and they shall go up from the land 
for the great for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Say to your brother, you are my people. Say to your sister, you are you have received mercy. So this speaks of a glimpse of restoration. Why? Because of the covenant that God has made with Israel. Not because of Israel's good behavior, because we have seen that Israel has behaved very badly. And here, God is telling them already because of the covenant. It was based on this this love that you will have mercy again. And, and he and he will call them the children of God again. And the split kingdom, there will be a, a gathering, a togetherness again. So I want to tell you something about uh, prophetic fulfillment. All right. So when when um, when uh, prophet speaks, um, can you give me the the little the the beak that you use for your uh, the black thing like this? The um, it's there. It's inside of that thing. No, 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 back, back, there, yeah, that black thing you use for your, your bugs, to pour the water, that thing, how do you call this, funnel. yeah, 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 this thing, funnel. a funnel, so I'm gonna use it as a telescope, right, not a funnel, this is a funnel, but I'm gonna use it as a telescope, so when those prophets prophesy, the, um, there is this telescopic view, right telescopic view like this so they, they see in a little scale and then they see in a little scale but later in the future it's gonna go much bigger the the effect of this prophetic word is gonna go much bigger like like you look like this you know I don't have a telescope, but I'm going to draw a little picture for, thank you so much, for you here, okay? I'm going to try to pen. So here is an example. So here is the prophet. He is from this side and is looking. Right, is looking toward that direction. And this is the present situation of Israel. And then there's going to be a second coming, maybe in the time of Jesus. And then maybe, no, that's the, where he was. Maybe that's the exile and the return of exile. And there is going to be a fulfillment when Jesus is coming. And there's going to be a fulfillment in the second coming so one word can have a very big impact you know so the fulfillment cannot be oh this is only one and that's it right but some of the some of the word will, will will say that he sees okay he is here is here and he looks from this side and he looks toward the future and now he, he, he sees Israel in this first situation. He sees the word, but the word can affect a much longer scope. So prophetic word can have this called telescopic uh, effect, telescopic view, prophetic. So, so I repeat again. So the present situation can maybe this but it also can be the after the exile some fulfillment some of the fulfillment can be in the time of Jesus in his first coming a lot of messianic prophecy about the messiah and in the parousia or the second coming of the lord again so this is called telescopic prophecy like how the fulfillment happened so some of those fulfillment can still be happening in the future but here and there, and they shall go in the land, for great shall be the day of Jezreel. Okay, so that you just have a little understanding of those things. Okay, let's move on. 
Now, from verse 2, chapter 2, from verse 2 to um, down. So, I'm going to take a break, okay? And uh, we're going to continue from this point on after this. <laughs> 